Sinkholes are everywhere, my friends. They're everywhere. Most people don't realize sinkholes are also everywhere all across the Holy Bible. God used sinkholes many, many times to open the earth up and swallow up evil people, wicked people. <coughs> Excuse me. They're back. They're all over the great whore of Babylon, a.k.a. America. They're all over the world. Sinkholes are just appearing like mad. And, and most of them, the lion's share, or the majority, are here in the great whore of Babylon, uh, America. But again, they're all over the world. God's opening up huge holes in the earth to swallow up people, to swallow up homes, to swallow up... It's just, it's, it's, it's going, it's just going crazy. God is just sick and tired of the evil and the wickedness and the filth and the corruption on this earth. He's tired of what's going on. And I'm telling you, this is nothing compared to what's on the way, my friends. After the imminent rapture happens, and Jesus takes only the true bride of Christ, only those who are truly saved by his blood and repenting of their sins every day, the way the Bible says at least 250 times we have to do, we're going to be in heaven. But the rest of everybody else, probably 99% or more of the world, including Christians, you heard me right, are going to be left behind to deal with stuff like this everywhere. I mean, I think St. Coles are going to appear in neighborhoods throughout the U.S. And I know the U.S. is the Great War of Babylon, and the Bible says the Great War of Babylon will be destroyed, will be laid to waste, will be, every human being will die in this entire nation. And I've got a video on that. I'm going to link it up to this in the comments below. Let's see what Scripture has to say, first of all, and then we will continue on. Let's see what we got here. As always, all of my scripture is from the King James Version Bible. Number 16, 32. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. Numbers 26, 10. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, together with Korah. When that company died, the time the fire devoured 250 men, they became a sign. And again, the Bible is is a reiterating two different times. Exodus 15, 12. Thou stretchest out thine hand, the earth swallowed them. Deuteronomy 11, 6. And what he did unto Dathan and Ab Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their households and their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of Israel. And again, this is another one that backs the other one up. Psalms 106, 17. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and, and the company and cover the company of Abraham. Lastly, in Revelation 12, 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. That's going to be during the Great Tribulation. So we can see that sinkholes are throughout the Bible. The earth opens up her mouth constantly through the hand of God, and takes in houses, tents, people, livestock, whatever it is. So here's a question you have to ask yourself. Do you want to be left behind to deal with this? To deal with earthquakes that make today's earthquakes seem like a little a little um, crack in the sidewalk where you're going to have real asteroids hitting the earth, not getting not near misses, hitting the earth, a huge asteroid is going to wipe out a third of all the population. It's going to destroy oceans, rivers, streams, lakes, flowers, fauna. Where a hundred million man army is going to march down from China from the north and, and wipe out Another huge chunk of the population of the world, a quarter to a third, where huge hailstones that weigh 100 pounds are coming out of the sky and just crush people. The, the baseball and softball size hail we've been seeing in China and in, the, in the, the southeast of this country are nothing compared to that. This, these hailstones, I figured it out, will be the size of two huge beach balls combined into one, falling out of the sky on everybody. What's that going to do to you? The sun's so hot that it actually just gives you third degree burns from just being outside or kills you. Poisonous insects coming out of the pits of hell that will sting and sting and sting for months and months. You wish you died, but you can't. Famine, plague, disease, pestilence, homelessness, joblessness, suffering, hunger, thirst, like you've never dreamed in your entire life. It's gonna to make today's terrible, evil, wicked, falling apart world seem like eating an ice cream cone in a park on a spring day forever, for seven straight years. So what's going to be, my friends? Are you going to be left behind for this? With all those who aren't saved and, and the majority of Christians who, again, 
refuse to repent of their sins, even though the Bible says hundreds of times we have to. And I've got that on a Word document. I've sent it to, I don't want to, to countless people. I'll send it to you as well if you ask me to. So the bottom line is this. I'm going to pray a prayer like I always do. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you pray this prayer with me now. Or if you're backslidden, you pray this prayer now. You come to Jesus or come back to Him, and you'll be set. Then I've got six quick steps to do afterwards. I know your time is valuable. I'll let you go as soon as I can. I love you guys. Let's pray. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of God the Father to make a place for your children forever in heaven. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. Your precious name I ask it. Amen. When you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Now, first thing, get you a King James Version Bible. It's the living, breathing Word of God. It's the only real Bible out there. The way you feed your body, the food and water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and soul if you read it every day. Ten bucks on Amazon or eBay or elsewhere. Number two, pray daily to Jesus every day. He loves you. He wants to talk to you every day. Number three, get water baptized in a Christian church dumped under water as soon as possible. If you are sprinkled baptized, it don't count my friends. Do it over again. Number four, pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit, sanctified from head to toe by living for Christ, by reading the Bible, by praying, and by living daily for Him. Number five, take your King James Version Bible to church. When the pastor preaches, you compare what he says to your Bible. If it don't match, you close it and you walk out and find somewhere else to worship. Because anyone who would lie to you, in Jesus' name, anyone who would lie to you about what God's Word says, will drag you to hell. And I know Christian churches are hard to find. If you can't find one, start a home church with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, or strangers. On my main Facebook page, on the right-hand side, I've got one recommended page. That's my home church sermon page. I do a new sermon every week. If you can't find a church, if you're starting a home church, if you're in the middle of looking for a church, Check out my home sermon every weekend. It'll, it's right from the Holy Bible and it'll bless you. Lastly, repent, repent, repent. After you're saved, when you sin, the Bible says at least 250 times that every time we sin, we have to repent each time. If not, we're not going to go to heaven. That's not Paul kid telling you. It's the Holy Bible telling you. It's God telling you. If you've got questions or comments or concerns that are legitimate, you want me to pray for you for, for anything, from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it, but praise the Lord that I've got it. When I asked for it, He gave it to me. And I'll pray for you for a miracle in your life if you ask me to. I know that God will perform that miracle if it's within His holy will. And if He does, it's all through Him. Nothing to do with me. It's all through God. I love you guys, and I pray for you every day. And I do this because I love you. No other reason. I've got no other motive. Just because I love you, I don't want to see anyone go to hell. Let's get ready. Time is short. Thanks.